The Whips have agreed that paragraph 1 of report number 1, Community Safety Partnership Plan, will be taken next. I now move reception of that report and paragraph. An amendment to this paragraph has been circulated in the Chamber. May I ask councillors Anderson and Jones to move and second their amendment. <coughs> I have agreed a request from councillors O'Brien and Cook. They be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes on this item. There are obviously speakers on the motion. Second. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, Councillor O'Brien. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it seems fitting that on an occasion that we remember the life of a great local conservative champion of community safety in Jim Madden, that we should also be looking to approve a new four-year community safety plan in Wandsworth. And I think, in fact, I'm sure Jim would agree that this plan really goes to the heart of what are our conservative values that the best solutions to our problems are not to be found in any centrally imposed master plan from Whitehall or from City Hall, but in our own neighbourhoods, in our community settings, and through empowering those in our communities to make a difference. Because ultimately that's what this plan is about. It's not just about tackling or reducing crime, but it's about being safe and feeling safe in our community and in our home here in Wandsworth. And we want Wandsworth to be the best and the safest place to live. And we are committed to retaining its place, which it currently has, as the safest inner London borough. And I think that purpose is clear throughout the plan that we have before us today for approval. It's clear in having safer neighbourhoods as the first and the leading priority. And we are committed to do, as we have done today, going above and beyond our role as a local authority, for example, in hosting our safer neighbourhood boards. It's clear in the very well uh, laid out, timetabled action plan for us to implement the plan. There is a clear sense of purpose in what we want to do, that we have commenced and that we will continue to do. And then thirdly, I think that purpose is very clear through what is an outcomes focused approach, really reflecting a, a modern approach to crime prevention. Because while numbers of traditional crimes, high harm crimes, have fallen, an increase in reporting and improvements in recording of crime have revealed that there are many victims suffering in silence among the most vulnerable in our society, whether that's the victims of domestic violence or some of our most vulnerable young people and children. And so I'm pleased that both of those issues, both tackling domestic violence and lo looking after our young, are themselves very, very clear priorities within this plan. I'm particularly pleased as well to see sp specific mention of objectives to combat female genital mutilation, building upon the great work in the last two parliaments of the Conservative MP for Battersea Jane Ellison, who not only led on this issue, but actually took real action in, in giving teeth to the legislation and ensuring mandatory reporting of that crime. I'm also pleased to see that we'll be building upon work which is innovative and leading. For example, um, through Project T-Rose, which some of you will have seen in the plan, an initiative jointly led by the police and Wandsworth Community Services, whereby following incidents of domestic violence, the next morning our team are alerting schools to the issue so that they may support and protect vulnerable children. You know, again, this is something that was piloted in Wandsworth, and as so often, it's been rolled out to the rest of London. We are, in this regard, though, very lucky to have real champions of community safety in our local police. And I think we will all, for the, purposes of this, um, for the purposes of this discussion and debate, I think we would all agree um, that the police have had um, an incredibly difficult year, um, both in response to terrorist attacks in London Bridge and Westminster, and also in the response to the Grenfell tragedy. And, and I, I certainly, and I know we all, both acknowledge, thank, and praise the work that they do. But I think in making the case for this plan, it, it's difficult to do that without at the same time acknowledging some of the challenges. And I think first, um, first and foremost amongst them are the challenges in funding. Because at the same time we have, we have brought many achievements to community safety, and we have a clear plan for the years ahead to deliver 
further improvements, that is very much in the context of a proposed reduction over that period in funding of 51% imposed by City Hall. And we, we've already, through the questions, I think, talked about the letter of um, uh, Marsha de Cordova, the, MP for, the current MP for, for Battersea, where in the first half she talks in the usual Labour way about austerity agenda, Tory cuts. But ultimately, ultimately what she then goes on to do is accept and acquiesce that actually this police station, Lavender Hill, should close. And then who does she, who does she turn to when she, she wants to take action? But of course she defers to Sophie Linden. She defers to City Hall. And frankly, I think here amongst Wandsworth Conservatives, we just don't think that's good enough. We expect our, our parliamentarians in Wandsworth to actually fight for our police stations, to actually really, really, really challenge, really challenge the decision. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what this comes down to. It's a question of choice. And it's a question of choice as to where this funding goes. And it is a choice that Sadiq Khan had as to what to do with his 72 million. And that choice was one that targeted at Wandsworth and Richmond was a choice to reduce our funding by 51%. It was a choice to reduce the funding in Richmond to 55%. And it was a choice to take away from the neighborhoods and communities this funding, to top slice it, to have 30% allocated to pan-London services. So before we get into arguments around central government funding going, going back seven years, this is ultimately a choice about Wandsworth. And when it came down to that, Sadiq Khan decided it was going to cut services in, in Wandsworth. It was going to prioritize our police stations for closure, and we just don't agree with it. It's time to get behind this community safety plan, get behind the Wandsworth Conservative campaign to save these police stations, and frankly, for you all to get behind Wandsworth, which is what you're elected to do. Thank you very much. Councillor Jones. Um, there's, there's very little, actually, in this paper that I think we disagree on. The Council's plans do basically mirror the proposals put forward by the Mayor of London in his recent consultation on public access to the, the Met Police's services, which, may I say, the Council promoted very poorly, but don't get me started again on the Council's woeful track record on consultation. Given there is consensus on both sides on the need for more community police officers, more neighbourhood involvement and a more targeted approach, all of which are mayoral proposals, attempts by the Tories on this council to rubbish the mayor publicly while supporting his proposals on paper for purely party political motives really do you no credit at all. Let's be very clear about what is happening to policing and why. The Met has been asked to find savings of £1 billion over an 11-year period, leaving it in the terrible position of having to sell off assets. The police station in Lavender Hill will have to close. Make no mistake, though, these challenges in funding that Councillor O'Brien referred to are central government cuts. They are to blame. The mayor is trying to mitigate the impact of these cuts by modernising the way policing is done. The underused, not-for-purpose Lavender Hill Police Station will be replaced, which you fail to say, by a modern 24-hour police station. We hope this will be close to the existing one, and the devil is always in the detail. Public access to the police will be improved through the introduction of modern technology like iPads, iPhones, and through new crime desks where people can more easily report their crimes. Crucially, by taking these steps, the number of police employed by the Met will remain stable and community policing will be strengthened. We have the Mayor to thank. But what is it the Council is doing? Instead of standing up to central government who is imposing these cuts, publicly opposing the £1 billion reduction in the Met's budget, or supporting the innovative solutions the Mayor has put forward, this Council's running a campaign to rubbish the Mayor. When Tooting Police Station closed under Boris Johnson, this Council stayed silent. 
When Lavender Hill Station is earmarked for closure under a Labour mayor, Tory councillors turn out in their droves to hold up placards. It does this not to serve its residents, but to try and extract some misguided political gain ahead of elections that it quite fairly fears it's going to lose. And because, frankly, it's got nothing else to offer its residents. And this behaviour is part of a pattern which we touched on earlier. I noticed Councillor Cook gave absolutely no response to those who think he, you're not listening which is that this council doesn't serve the people of this borough anymore. Time was you had the confidence to oppose government plans that residents didn't like, like the expansion in Heathrow. Back then, your opposition filled the pages of Brightside. But now, all residents can expect is total capitulation to the government's austerity measures, even when they don't serve the people that you have been elected to represent. An ill-judged party politicking to try and score cheap points against the mayor, who's working in the interests of those who elected him, against a backdrop of truly astonishing government cuts. Take Grenfell. This council refuses publicly to lobby central government for the money it needs to install sprinkler systems after that appalling fire. Instead, you stay quiet, opting to spend your own taxpayers' money to plug the funding gap from central government rather than rock the boat. Whose side is this council on? Take cuts to local school budgets, which will cost Wandsworth School 7.7 million by 2020. You are ideally placed to publicly lobby the Education Secretary, herself a Wandsworth MP. Imagine the impact that would have if the Secretary of State's own Tory Council stood up for its residents and opposed these cuts. It might even make Brightside worth reading. Instead, the Cabinet member will tell us she's having a quiet word in private and schools have to think creatively. Like it's their fault they haven't got the money can they I, need to I teach our children. Please? You can in a second, I'm nearly finished. I've this good. council uh, has become a I sorry excuse. You can in a second. About your about about this, this council, has, a, this council has become a sorry excuse for an administration. It's nothing more than a government lackey. It serves the government's agenda and not its residents. It blames everyone except those who are to blame for cuts in policing and education. You should put the placards down, pick up the phone to central government and stand up for Wandsworth. Councillor Hampton. Can I just comment on what Councillor Jones is it, a, is it a point of personal... A personal uh, explanation about... Because yes. she says I have not lobbied on behalf of the residents of... You said... No, let us I've speak. Let public. us speak. I have sent public letters. You have seen them. I have also lobbied in private, which is effective. Look at the reduction, um, we, we've, the, the increase we've got in the, in the spending. That is, the, that is public, that letter. And I, sh I hope you can... Uh, Here we go. Um, that was an eloquent comment of Councillor McDermott, no doubt justified in its way. But compared with the assertions made against Labour members that you have not allowed us to respond to, it was as nothing. You must not allow interjections of that kind which just come out of debate when you don't allow them equivalently on this side. I think you need to consider Councilor that. Councillor Belton, every council session, you were given aware five that any, or ten uh, minutes for these little... Member of the Labour group had asked for a point of first intervention. Councillor, I'm sorry about the rude interruptions from your side. Councillor Hampton, please. I don't want to talk about <coughs> statistics. I want to talk about people. In 2012, Councillor Leonie Cooper said about the closure of Lavender Hill Police Station, the Met Police need to engage in a full consultation with the local community. I completely agree with her. But I'm going to give you the feedback from St Mary's Park Ward and the conversations we've had on the doorstep. Ava lives in Burnett Court on the Surrey Lane Estate two stories above where 22-year-old 
Malaki Brooks, was murdered in March this year. Ava is a single mum with kids, and she's fearful for herself and her children. The murders and violent crimes increase in her neighborhood. She has a problem with her son. He's skipping school, and he's turning into a real handful. I told her about Carney's community and the great work that they do. Through boxing and intensive mentoring, they get those at risk away from crime, and when they're older, into employment. Last year, they helped over 400 kids, and 200 of those were at risk, some of them already known to the police. This charity really works and has positive and continuing outcomes. Battersea Summer Scheme is dear to my heart, not only providing summer activities for kids, but using residential courses on farms and sea to allow those troubled and challenged kids to make better choices in life. But Sadiq Khan has reduced the crime prevention budget by 51%, effective in April 2018. That's £350,000 less in Wandsworth. I want to ask you to join me in asking Sadiq Khan to think again, to, to continue to support the vital work that Carney's community and the Battersea Summer Scheme do to prevent crime at source and to show the disengaged that there is another way. Helen lives in Masculine Court on the Ethelberger estate. I don't care about politics, she said to me, but I do care about the police station I don't want them to close the front desk. I don't want them to sell it off. She suffered from domestic violence. She was full of praise as to how the police had managed her ordeal and literally saved her from a horrific situation. But she told me you need to be face to face to go through the trauma. A 20 minute wait for 101, if you're lucky, is not going to allow women like Helen to take the first step to reporting what is happening to them. Huey told me he could manage online reporting, but what about the vulnerable, the frightened elderly, those with learning disabilities? It's certainly not going to help the terrified teenager who's got tangled up in groups intent on violence and who needs to talk to someone in confidence, not just an anonymous call. That consultation, councillors, is loud and clear, that my residents do not want these cuts. Councillor Cooper said in 2012, Labour councillors wholeheartedly disagree with any plans to close Lavender Hill Police Station. And here, placards with Councillor Hogg, who I see has left, wanting to save Lavender Hill as well. So colleagues, let's agree on both sides of the chamber that Sadiq Khan has got this wrong and call him to overturn a decision that will cause harm to my residents and which university has no support. Let us all campaign to save Lavender Hill Police Station. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. What we all want, as Wandsworth councillors, is to make our borough a fantastic place to live and work and a place of opportunity for everyone. And we can do that through our regeneration programmes, through great schools, vibrant town centres and having clean and attractive streets. But our residents also must feel safe. The police here in Wandsworth have done an incredible job over many years it, it, it is on, <laughs> to make Wandsworth the safest in a London borough. And our community safety team have supported them, really delivering a local solution and building deep links with the community. 
I think some parts of the suite of proposals outlined by the Mayor could put this hard work at risk. And this isn't just local politicking or scaremongering. Other London leaders of varying political colours have also raised concerns about the changes in their areas. But as a Wandsworth councillor, my focus has to be the effect that these proposals will have on our residents. I am worried about the closure of Lavender Hill, both the ultimate effect, which I think will be to weaken community links with the police, but also the lack of clear plans, timelines and an alternative location which would have made the so-called consultation meaningful. I'll just give you a quick quote. Given that Lavender Hill Station is just metres away from one of the worst affected areas by last summer's riots, Wandsworth residents rightly expect their council to fight for its future now, rather than wait until a decision to sell it off is finalised. Although Labour councillors understand that cuts need to be made during these difficult economic times, we would prioritise and protect community safety services and find savings elsewhere. Well, hear, hear, I totally agree. And that was Councillor Osborne, then leader of the Labour group, reacting to a rumoured closure of Lavender Hill, which of course never actually happened under Boris. So now it's the Labour mayor proposing a closure, and their voice has fallen silent. I think this just demonstrates the hypocrisy of the opposition councillors. So what was Sadiq Khan's take on this back then as the MP for Tooting? Well, he said, I support the Guardian's campaign against the Mayor of London's plans to close police stations in Wandsworth. Victims of crime, witnesses with information, residents with useful intelligence, members of the public wanting crime prevention advice, and many others will not be able to attend a local police station and won't make the journey for miles to visit their nearest open station well, how he has changed his tune. I'm also against the huge cuts to Wandsworth crime prevention funding. This money should be spent locally in line with our community's priorities, not top sliced and funneled off to other areas. And then finally, the proposed changes to the basic command unit structure. I have deep concerns about whether the proposals will achieve what they aim to. And for me, it's yet another example of how Wandsworth is losing out yet again. Currently, Wandsworth, along with all of London's 32 boroughs, has a chief superintendent who is in charge of all local policing matters and is able to respond quickly to local concerns. Under the mayor's new system, this officer will be split four ways and shared between Wandsworth, Merton, Kingston and Richmond, all of the other boroughs are being grouped into twos or threes and I think this change will mean that senior officers are more distant and less able to concentrate on important local issues. And there are also issues with the pilot project. In the pilot where only three boroughs have been brought together, the number of emergency calls being responded to within the Met's target time has fallen hugely to the lowest in London. The Labour leader for Barking and Dagenham, Karen, Councillor Darren Rodwell, wrote Residents need reassurance in the form of a visible police presence, and I am unconvinced that the BCE will be able to deliver this as it currently stands. Three months on, it's apparent we are nowhere near providing the service we need to keep our residents safe. Already the Mayor is preparing to roll out this new system across London, and I am worried it will have a detrimental effect on our residents. This Conservative Council is standing up for Wandsworth and challenging the Mayor's plans to spend our crime prevention budget elsewhere to close key stations without proper consultation and to change our command structure in a way that we think will be damaging. The question is, why aren't Labour? For the person, point of personal explanation. Anderson. Point of personal explanation, I was quoted, Mr Council. Mayor. Um, the quote was absolutely accurate and I commend Councillor Caddy for getting it so accurate. But her addendum, which referred to the closure of Lavender Hill Police Station as rumoured, was not accurate because when I made that uh, assertion at a council meeting, I was quoting from a Metropolitan Police document which had listed Lavender Hill as one of the stations it was considering for closure. The difference was, in those days, the proposal was, yes, and, and correct, we quite correctly campaigned against its closure, because the difference was in those days it was closure 
full stop. And now what we've got is a move of the station. <laughs> Will you campaign against Mr. the closure again? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is this May a point of order? I offer some further explanation of Councillor Osborne's. I've been asked to speak. I don't think you've been mentioned or named. I don't really see the point of order coming here. Councillor Anderson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Wandsworth Council must oppose these government police cuts and not keep blaming the Mayor all the time. We need a council that will listen to local residents about crime and safety issues, will square up to the Tory government and will rigorously oppose any further police cuts. I'd like to start by thanking Wandsworth Police Force and the community safety officers who are so dedicated and effective. Some are here including the police officer who broke his foot whilst chasing and making an arrest in Bedford Ward last week. He caught them. It was all right. We are united here today in supporting the Community Safety Partnership Plan and its new priority areas. In particular, I welcome the Mayor's commitment to dedicated ward officers in each ward, most of whom are already in place in Wandsworth. But now I think we should unite in opposing government police cuts. Tory councillors should stop playing politics with residents' safety, should start taking responsibility for Tory austerity policies, which are leading to this. That's the choice that, that everyone's being forced into. And stop blaming the London Mayor for government police budget cuts. We're facing a funding crisis in our police services across the country and across the Met, caused by sustained real-term cuts by the government. The Met has already had to deliver £600 million of cuts between 2012 and 2016, and now a further £400 million is required in the next four years. In the Wandsworth public consultation meeting, which was held here in the town hall, the borough commander called these the biggest changes he'd ever seen in his 29-year career in the Met. And it's upon his advice that these changes are being made. You referred earlier, Deputy Leader, to taking the advice of the fire commander. We should also take the advice of the borough commander. He's having to make very difficult decisions. Crime increases have been seen across England and Wales as a result of this failing Tory government, including as a result of cuts to so many other services, not just police services, that help prevent crime. In Wandsworth last year, there were 40 staff in the youth offending team, for example, and this year, there are 36 staff members in that team. We need to make sure that the teams that are delivering the community safety plan are there and are not cut any further. But it's not just Wandsworth. There are other ways in which we as a whole council, especially you, could be standing up to the government far more. Counter-terror is one of them. The non-political expert, Chief Constable Sarah Thornton, who's chair of the National Police Chiefs Council, set out last month that counter-terror funding for policing is going to be cut by more than 7% over the next three years. The Prime Minister, as former Home Secretary, should be ashamed of these cuts, as they really affect residents across London, but in Wandsworth as well. It's a particular issue because where there are high terrorist threat levels, as in London, the cuts here are both dangerous, obviously, and could lead, a, lead to higher policing costs, which will have a knock-on effect to our community police budgets. They should be rigorously and vigorously opposed by this whole council. The London Mayor, who you've referred to obviously earlier, is doing all that he can to raise money for the police. There's no need to be lobbying him as his first port of call. It is the government that you need to go to. The Mayor's been lobbying the government to take action ever since he was elected. The Mayor increased council tax by the maximum allowed to fund the police so that he could do ever, everything in his power to provide more resources to the Met. And then he provided all of the money from the preset to the mechanism, giving it to the police. However, the money he raised from this is simply nowhere near enough to fill the huge funding gap caused by the government. In contrast, the previous Tory Mayor chose not to increase the council tax preset for 2016. This left a gap in the Greater London Authority income available for the Met. He didn't do all that he could, as Sadiq is doing. Despite Boris Johnson's decision, Sadiq Khan has now made an additional £24 million available. He is doing all he can. It's the government cuts that the council should oppose. The Mayor has committed to ensuring that each borough will maintain a 24-hour police front counter. I'm coming to the end. Um, 
he's not treating Wandsworth any differently. We are not getting unfairly amount of funding. The borough commander is right, and wouldn't you agree that his advice makes a difference to keep response times and keeps the number of bobbies on the streets, the number of people able to talk face to face that the people Councillor Hampton was talking about. These plans include more modernised approaches, more public engagement in different ways. This is being done by saving money on costly buildings and senior management. These are invidious choices that have to be made, but surely keeping public bob bobbies on the streets is the right choice. So three actions now are urgent, and I finish with these. We now do need to know where the Lavender Hill Police Station will be moved to and where these community hubs are. That wasn't in the consultation, I absolutely agree with you. We can't offer our opinion on where this new police station will be and what we think of it until we know where it will be. But we need consultation on those plans once it's out. We do also need assurance that the 101 phone line responses will be vastly improved. These are being used by far more people than police stations but are underperforming. And finally, thirdly, Above all, we need a council that will listen to local residents and their concerns about safety and crime, that will square up to the Tory government instead of just blaming the mayor all the time and vigorously actually oppose any further cuts. Thank you. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, if I might uh, start with a few, few bits and pieces, correct a few facts uh, before I uh, launch into what I was going to say. Uh, first, uh, Councillor Osborne, I well remember um, uh, your magnificent theatrical revelation at Lavender Hill, an FOI request I, I remember and uh, was a little surprised, I, I confess, about four years ago now. Uh, but you missed out one very, very important fact. The proposal was that it would either be Battersea Police Station or Lavender Hill, not both. And that was very much our position, that we could live with one, but not both. And, of course, that is the mayor listened to us, and he closed one, not both. Um, Councillor Anderson, you've got a terrible mess with commanders and commissioners. Let me help you. Commissioners do the whole city. So the fire commissioner I was referring to you is responsible for all of London. You can pretend not to listen when you're having a go at us about not listening. Commanders do the boroughs, okay? So there is no comparison to be made there. But disgracefully, you referred to um, a cut in, uh, in funding and resources available for anti-terror operations. And just a few weeks ago, I confess I can't remember whether it was pre or post uh, Parsons Green, um, the commissioner, uh, Cressida Dick, was asked whether she had ever, or whether her immediate predecessor, had ever been in the position where they had felt they had not had the resources to deal with a terrorist incident and she didn't hesitate to say no I've always had what I needed and I think you need to reflect on what you said because that's incredibly important in terms of public confidence um, to return to I uh, better be better be quick now uh, it's um, I mean as, as colleagues have, have, have mentioned uh, keeping keeping everyone safe and feeling safe is arguably the first duty of any government, national, national or local, uh, and that's certainly always been my view, and it's probably how, how, how we all feel. Um, we have long, long been the safest in a London borough, and that has been down to reliable resourcing and fantastic partnership working. So I was honoured uh, to have the opportunity just about two or three weeks ago uh, to give out commendations at a police awards ceremony, uh, happens once every six months, uh, to uh, police officers from this borough who've done incredible things. Um, the descriptions are things most of us wouldn't even imagine, uh, way, way beyond the call of duty. Uh, so we are fortunate indeed to have su such a superb bunch of policemen uh, in this borough. Um, we are absolutely determined it stays the safest in a London borough, and I have to say that what the Mayor is doing is not in any way helping. It's come to something, uh, and Councillor Caddy uh, made reference to this. When a Labour borough leader publicly attacks his own Mayor for cutting police, abolishing the borough commander, and closing police stations, in this particular instance it was Barking Police Station, uh, is in the same position as, as Lavender Hill. So we have excellent partnerships, but we face a multitude of threats. Closure of police stations with no credible plan for replacement, reduction in police numbers, which I will return to, loss of our borough commander, and appallingly a 51% cut in our crime prevention funding. These, these are all choices by the Mayor. He does not have, he does not, nonsense, nonsense. He does not have to do these things. He has decided to do them. So let's just go through them, shall we? Shall we just go through them? 
you should listen. You should listen. You're always telling us we should listen. Police stations. So, I mean, we, no, no problem. Councillor Jones says, well, it's awful. We're having to sell the police, are having to sell off assets. We have sold assets when it's been appropriate to do so for years. It's often a sensible way to run things. Got no problem with that. Uh, we I mentioned uh, Battersea Police Station. Made perfect sense at the time. Um, Tooting Police Station, obviously far, far too big and in the wrong place. So we've been urging for years that that ought to be looked at. But in both of those cases, it's incredible that MOPAC have now come forward with closure plans for both of those places, but absolutely nothing by way of detail about how, how they're going to be replaced. So let's look at Lavender Hill. MOPAC say they're going to save £1.2 million pounds a year by closing it. It's £120,000 a year if you read Council Anderson's blog, which I wouldn't particularly recommend. Um, but the trouble is they don't own it. It's owned by the court service. So, leaving, leaving that aside, even if they did own it and they were going to get £1.2 million for it, indeed they are, if they were going to get £1.2 million for it, what are they going to do with that £1.2 million? You're not going to get a lot of replacement police station on Lavender Hill for £1.2 million. So, if they are determined they're going to make a saving, the implication is clear. Whatever it's replaced with is going to be very, very tiny indeed if indeed it exists. So we have got to have that detail. What has been proposed is not credible, and it could easily end up costing money. Uh, the confusion, evident from the things you said, uh, but is also evident in the, the new Battersea MP. She tweeted uh, recently, uh, these are consecutive lines in a tweet, Lavender Hill as a front counter service will not be closed. And then the next line she says, however Lavender Hill as a site is facing closure. Well, you try and make sense of that. I can't. <laughs> Any resident is going to read that and think, well, what on earth is going on? The MP doesn't seem to know. And it's symptomatic of a botched and irresponsible policy by MOPAC. that just is not clear. Of equal concern are smaller facilities in our estates, right across the borough. And in particular, the Wynn Stanley estate, where there have been dreadful incidents over recent months. And I find it deeply disturbing that a lack of usage of a facility there can be cited as a reason to withdraw it entirely. Surely the question, given the enormous public safety risks that there are, uh, and we, we all know what has happened there in recent months, the question should surely be why aren't people using the facility rather than we're closing the facility. City Hall budget cuts. I, I, I will be brief, but uh, you are frankly deluded on the opposite side of this chamber. The mayor decided to cut £38 million from the police staffing budget. That was his choice. Nobody was forcing him to do that. So it became impossible to get the re requisite number of uh, police in the city. Uh, you've made frequent reference to the £600 million and the £400 million savings. The £600 million was achieved largely by sale of assets under Mayor Boris very effective the police did a very very good job and that there's no reason why that shouldn't continue and very senior police officers have said to me this is challenge they said about two years ago this extra 400 at the time it was actually near of 600 it's come down a little bit they said this is tough this is going to be tough but we can do it so it's that spirit that the mayor should be tapping into rather than blaming other people and on the blame game it's interesting isn't it totally different thing do you remember a few weeks ago when he decided he was going to clobber uber and he decided that uber well that bit him didn't it and when he realized it was all going terribly badly wrong for him this line the next day was blame uber nothing to do with me blame uber it's what he does police police officer numbers police officer numbers um, it's taken a lot of work to dig into this but it is now finally becoming clear what's going on what we have with absolute certainty is May 2016, uh, when the new mayor took over, uh, is that uh, we had 528 police officers in Wandsworth. Uh, the borough commander recently confirmed it was less than 500, and now I have just discovered, and I know that you know this, Councillor Anderson, but it's funny you didn't mention it, um, that it is now, for August, 467. Shame. Shame. And I will quote, I know you know that, Councillor Anderson, because I've seen the email. Um, on Tuesday, Sophie, Sophie Lee, I've seen the email that was sent to you. Um, on Tuesday, the Deputy Mayor, Sophie Linden, was quoted as saying, it's taking, it's, the Mayor is taking extremely difficult decisions in order to protect police office numbers, including consulting on proposals to close half, half of London's police front counters. Well, that's not working out too well in Wandsworth, is it? As though one makes the other okay. We're losing on both fronts. The London Crime Prevention Fund cut, the 51%. Well, it's a real shame that our assembly member isn't uh, here this evening, but I have to say it's... Com ah, I do apologise. Just arrived. Fantastic. I am delighted because I did want you to hear this, Councillor Cooper. 
um, because uh, several emails to you over the last few months of what I can only describe as this farrago that was announced last autumn um, have, have yielded, I'm sorry to say, they've been very pleasant, very pleasant, we're very respectful towards each other, but it has to be said they've yielded virtually nil substantive response. Uh, I'll see what I can do, I'm working on it, you misheard me, I suggest you go to the meetings. Well, I have been to lots of meetings, I've been absolutely assiduous in that, and it is very clear now that there is nowhere near enough money and there are going to be an awful lot of disappointed boroughs uh, right across this city. There were bids for £58 million worth of projects. There is only, there's now been whittled down for £15 million, um, but there's only £10 million available. And next year it'll be £5 million. So that gives you a sense of how much disappointment and frustration there's going to be across this city. The operational command unit uh, changes have been talked about. It is proposed that we are one of a unit of four, the only unit of four in the entire city. We know a thing or two about amalgamations. We're not squeamish about that with everything we've done with our shared staffing arrangement. But this is way too far. It's a huge and risky step. So, to conclude, it is clear that we are getting a very bad deal in this borough from this mayor. These are decisions, and it's all about political leadership. And I have to say, I think it was disgraceful the, the recent, that the recent consultation which took place in this chamber. There was no senior political leadership from MOPAC. The deputy mayor wasn't here. The assembly member wasn't here. And the borough commander, in common with other boroughs, was placed here and put in the position of having to front up what is a political plan. And that is disgraceful. He is a policeman and he should not be put in that position. Uh, and I feel for him. He has not said anything to me. They are my words. Um, so, uh, to conclude, I, uh, I very much support and commend the Community Safety Partnership Plan. I think we can be proud of the partnerships that we have got. Uh, but there is an awful lot to worry about. And I emphatically reject the amendment that's been put forward by the opposition. The matter now before the Council is the Labour Group Amendment to paragraph number one, report number one, Community Safety Plan, agenda item 11. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. Those against the amendment. And those abstaining? So that's lost 16, 29, one abstention. So the result is uh, the, amendment is the amendment is lost 16, 29 with one abstention. Thank you. So the matter, where are we now? The matter now before the Council is paragraph number one, report number one. Please, uh, that's the original amendment. Uh, yeah, is, that, is that in fact, is that agreed? Right, same numbers. Thank you very much. Not same numbers. Not same numbers. Reverse numbers. numbers. No, I think it's. I think it's, it's agreed. agreed it's agreed. I'm so sorry. My mistake. It's agreed. Thank you. <laughs>